in a golden chariot acquired through penance, rode Robin's young son. When he saw Hanuman seated on the stone battlement above the gateway, and noted approvingly the beautiful symmetry of his mighty limbs and the majestic fearlessness of his look, Aksha felt that here was a foe worthy of his steel, and so he summoned all his strength and resolution to do him honor. The young warrior aimed three sharp arrows at Hanuman. They struck his body and drew blood. But Hanuman's strength increased, and his face shone with new splendor. He too was pleased with the prowess of the youthful Rakshasa. The battle between the two grew fierce. Hundreds of arrows zoomed into the sky and hit Hanuman. Like rain falling on a rock, they fell on Hanuman's body. Rising in the air, Hanuman dodged about, evading the arrows. He admired Aksha's youthful promise and heroism and was sorry to have to slay him. But there was no other way, for the prince seemed to get more and more formidable as the fight went on, and it was unwise to take chances with him. At last Hanuman hardened his heart and decided to destroy the youth. He rushed against Aksha's chariot and broke it to pieces. The horses fell dead. The Rakshasa prince stood on the ground chariotless. Undaunted, he rose in the air with bow and sword and attacked Hanuman. A great battle took place in the air. In the end, Aksha's bones were crushed and splintered, and he fell down dead. Hearing that the prince had been killed by Hanuman, Robin shook with rage. But controlling himself, he called his son Indrajit, the conqueror of Indra. He said to him, You have mastered all weapons. You have vanquished the gods and demons in battle. You have, by your austerities, called Lord Brahma down and secured from him the Brahmastra, the most powerful weapon. There is none in the world who can oppose you. Fatigue cannot approach you. Your knowledge of battle is unique. You have attained strength through austerity. Nothing is impossible for you, my son. None can equal you in foresight. The soldiers I sent, and Jambumali, and the five generals of our army, and your dear brother Aksha, they have all been slain by a terrible foe who has raided us in the form of a monkey. Now, it is your duty to avenge them. And do not underrate him. It seems he cannot be vanquished by weapons. He cannot be brought down in wrestling. So consider well what needs to be done. Do it and return victorious. The divine weapons you have secured through austerity can serve you at this moment. Without allowing your mind to wander, fight with concentration and return triumphant. Indrajit, bright like the gods, accepted his father's command with reverence and receiving his blessings, went with courage and eagerness toward the Ashok Park. Standing in a chariot drawn by four fierce lions and twanging his bowstring, Indrajit proceeded towards Hanuman. His chariot sounded like a roaring wind. His lotus-like eyes shone with victory. As Hanuman saw the chariot coming towards him, he was filled with joy. Indrajit too, skillful in battle, bent his bow and got his sharp arrows ready for Hanuman. Knowing that a great battle was at hand, celestial beings assembled in the sky to watch it. At the sight of Indrajit, Hanuman roared and increased his stature still further. further. Silently, the Rakshasa warrior dispatched his darts. Showers of arrows began to descend as in the famous battle of the gods and their cousins, the demons. Hanuman rose in the sky and, moving with speed like lightning, struck down the sharp arrows. 
His roar made the quarters echo, drowning the drum beats and the bow twangs of the Rakshasa. <laughs> The battle raged with increasing fury and filled all beholders with amazement. In skill and strength, the two warriors were perfect equals. No matter how often he was wounded, Hanuman's strength showed no signs of lessening. Indrajit therefore said to himself, My arrows cannot vanquish this monkey. What my father said is true. He can be bound only by using the Brahmastra. The Rakshasa prince sent forth the Brahmastra. At its very touch, the Vana warrior lay bound and helpless. Hanuman realized what had happened. He said to himself, I have been bound by the Brahmastra. Hanuman too had secured a boon from Lord Brahma and this he now remembered, saying to himself, This will keep me bound for only four-fifths of an hour, so I run no real risk. Let me see what the Rakshasas do to me while I lie bound and helpless, for I might find a further opportunity to obtain information for Ram. As instructed by Lord Brahma when he gave him the gift of immortality, he surrendered himself to the Brahmastra and lay down on the ground, inactive but in full possession of his faculties. When they saw Hanuman lying helpless on the ground, the Rakshasas, who till then stood at a distance in fear, surrounded him and danced with joy. They called him insulting names and praised their prince. They shouted, We shall cut you to pieces! Let us eat him up now! We shall drag him to the throne of our Ravan! But a few among them feared and said, this fellow is only pretending. He may get up suddenly and attack us. So they brought ropes of jute and coconut fiber, bound him hard and shouted exultingly, Now that we have bound him, let us drag him to the Lord of the Rakshasas. Indrajit, who discovered too late and could not prevent this foolish mistake of the Rakshasas, felt sad and thought, Alas, they have undone all my work. These fools do not know the secrets of supernatural weapons. By using ropes for binding him, the Astra withdraws its power. The force of the mantra is undone when physical bonds are added. Ah. Hanuman is now held only by the ropes which he can burst asunder and the Brahmastra cannot be used a second time. Hanuman also understood this and knew he could spring up free if he liked. But he welcomed the opportunity to meet and talk to Ravan and so allowed himself to be dragged to the king, patiently bearing all their insults and cruelties in seeming helplessness. They belabored and foully abused him, dragged him through the streets, and women and children came out to look at him and jeer. <laughs> <laughs>